Hi, this is Dr. Eric Thomas. I want to talk a little bit about a particular type of hair loss. Hopefully you'll never have it, though we can treat it, and it's not a major health problem, but it is a, one of those little, I wouldn't say orphan conditions. We talk about some things that are so unique that you're not going to see it many other places. Well, alopecia areata is not one of those. It's fairly common, and I'm sure there's plenty of it on the web. But uh, still, it's, uh, it's so characteristic, and it's so upsetting, and it can be, has a variety of, of uh, spectrum of seriousness. It could be relatively simple, or it could be the uh, extremely widespread. In fact, it can lead to uh, alopecia totalis or alopecia universalis, which is uh, sort of the other end of the spectrum. But I'm going to talk about the more common, the type I see in the office every day. So if yours is beyond what I'm talking about, please, I'm not being disrespectful to you. I sympathize, but I have to talk to the majority of people also. So alopecia areata, as I see it in the office, is usually in localized areas, usually on the scalp, that are circular, oval, sometimes they can intersect. It's said that it's one of the few conditions that can produce a triangle in uh, dermatology if you have three uh, circles intersecting. So let's say you have come in and you have a complete hair loss of uh, maybe that size, generally on the scalp. Yes, it can affect the corner of the eyelids, and I've seen that, the eyebrows. And yes, men do get it on the, uh, on the face. You might think, well, how would it bother a man on the face? Because after all, they just shave. But actually, regardless of how tightly a man shaves, the uh, skin is a different uh, texture. and There's really no uh, darkness in the follicles, so it is obvious. So uh, what's going on there? If you were to take a biopsy and look at it under a microscope, the bulb, the area from which the hair grows, would be surrounded by a cluster. It said it's like uh, bees around honey. A cluster of your own white blood cells that are somehow impacting, affecting, suppressing the growth of hair. Does it affect white and gray hair equally? Well, ultimately it could all be lost, but actually I've seen a number of people where the dark hair is lost uh, preferentially, so the whiter hair, grayer hair could be there. When it comes back, sometime after we treat it, I'll get to that in a minute, when it comes back, sometimes the first hair that grows is thinner and, and whiter. Now, there are old folk uh, wisdoms, old folk stories that we all think couldn't have happened. Things about people becoming white overnight because of a shock or a fright. I have no idea if this is true or not, but I can imagine, you know, a hundred uh, so years ago, uh, when people may see themselves only on a Sunday at a church or whatever, a meeting house, maybe only two or three times uh, uh, every two or three weeks, that a person who had widespread alopecia areata and had it affect primarily their dark hair might seem to a person who hadn't seen them for a few weeks to have indeed gone white well, overnight or quickly and also to have very thin hair. Because alopecia areata, although it usually is circular and specific, can occur a little more widespread. In any event, it seems to be an autoimmune disorder. You're beating up on your own hair. We don't know why. Oh, people say it occurs more commonly after an emotional shock, and it has been reported to happen a bit more after wars and so forth. I've seen two people who did have it occur after uh, twice in one person after a business reverse and, 
after immigrating to this country and the other person after an injury. But most of the time, people have no knowledge of anything particularly going on. They just uh, go to the barber or the beautician and, or a friend says, hey, what is that spot? They don't even feel it. Sometimes there's a little discomfort. When they come in, skin might look a little tiny, tiny, light pink. Usually it's normal. There may be a few little preserved hairs that are called exclamation hairs, but it's almost in the average case like someone has just had a punched out area, just a circular area of loss. What if you don't treat it? Eh, it's unpredictable. It can vary. It can go on to complete loss. It uh, can come back on its own, six months or so. Can we help you? Well, yeah, you know, we get pretty good results by trying to calm down that inflammation, those um, uh, cells that are clustered around the hair follicle. And we usually do that by taking a very tiny needle. It's much smaller than you think. 30-gauge uh, needle for the people who know, and injecting a weak solution of a cortisone, not a full-strength one. There are side effects not only internally but locally to that. So properly diluted, we uh, inject a steroid into the area, and that uh, basically suppresses the inflammation and leads to an awful lot of improvement most of the time. Uh, it takes four to six weeks for the hair to grow out. Uh, it uh, can be luxurious when you hit it just right. It could be lighter sometimes. And then we usually do that two or three times to maintain growth. Actually, even if we don't see growth, we like to do it a second time. Um, that's uh, one way. That's the usual way. And it often, I was about to say usually, but anyway, it often works. Certainly you start that way. Now, there are other techniques. There is a technique using certain irritating chemicals. A little difficult to get, not going to go into them too much. The older ones were ones that were in sealed refrigeration units, in air, refrigerators and so forth. Uh, they were irritating to the skin and it was felt people would almost never run into them. But I know of one office which does use these, not ours, and there are only one or two of the nurses who are even willing to go near the stuff. Why would we do that? Well, we apply uh, some products. I usually try to get a prescription that irritates that you can apply yourself. We apply those and try to produce a little redness and irritation. What is the uh, philosophy? What, is it, what are we doing there? But well, we're trying to bring into the area a group of inflammatory cells, yes, but a different group, one that are composed of a different type of uh, inflammation cell, inflammatory cells. Because not all cells are created equal, and there are some of this new group of cells that will actually hopefully flush away or control or confuse the cells that are beating up on your hair follicles. Well, that's just an introduction to one specific type of hair loss. And we also have a, a little more about hair loss, hormonal, and just the general uh, dynamics of hair growth. So I've had to break uh, hair growth or hair loss up a bit because it's so important and yet it's not all the same for everyone. Anyway, I hope that that helps you. I enjoy talking this way and uh, I hope it improves your quality of life and your understanding if uh, you or a loved one has this problem. Thank you for listening.